I'm Mark Wendell. I'm a product manager at Microsoft, and I'm working within Syntex Repository Services. Today, I'm going to give you the third installment on the introductory series of Syntex Repository Services, and we're going to talk a little bit about how Syntex Repository Services powers Microsoft Loop. Quick recap, though, in case you missed the prior two sessions, um, Syntex Repository Services is a faster way for developers to build and manage full-featured file and document-centric applications. Uh, it is in private preview now. We announced it at Build. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about it, you can go to aka.ms slash syntex slash repository build 23. At a high level, if you look at that diagram there, it is a platform as a service that sits in the middle and allows you to connect your custom applications to the Microsoft Cloud. And we're also using Syntex Repository Services to build our own first-party experiences like Designer and Loop. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how Loop works with it today. If you haven't heard of Microsoft Loop yet, it's a transformative co-creation experience that builds together, brings together teams, content, tasks across your tools and devices. It went into private or in a public preview uh, back in this past March. If you'd like to learn more about that, go to microsoft.com slash Microsoft loop. But we're going to get hands on with it. So with some of the demos that I've got uh, here is getting into the architecture of how Microsoft Loop and Syntex repository services work together. So if we're going to go right to left, if you look at the screen of the UX of the Microsoft Loop web application on the right hand side, what we're looking at is the workspace view. And this is the getting started workspace that gets stamped out for new users. And actually what happens under the hood is that when a workspace is created within Microsoft Loop, it creates a Syntex repository services container. Last week on this call, I showed you the API calls that you can use through Microsoft Graph to create containers and manage permissions of it. Loop is doing exactly the same thing. And then also on the right side in that blue box there, it lists the pages that are within this workspace. And again, those pages are actually just files within that container associated with the workspace. And repository services permissioning features are what are used via loop to secure access and provide sharing. I'm going to show you a quick demo of all of that working together. But first, a quick plug for our private preview again. If you've learned about repository services over the past few weeks and you feel like it might be a good fit for an application that you're building within your organization, you can go to ak.ms slash repository preview to sign up for our private preview. But now what I'm going to do is open up a browser window and visit the Loop web app at loop.microsoft.com. So I'm signed in right now as Megan Bowen, and this is the default workspaces view. So here we can see I've got two workspaces, one called projects and one called getting started that we were looking at earlier. Again, each workspace here is a container within Syntex repository services. So what I'm going to do is create a new workspace. I'll just call it demo. Create that. So what this did is it made a call to the repository services APIs to create a new repository services storage container. And it also created this first untitled page here. Let's give that a title. I'll do that. So I have my first page here. And that, again, is a file within the container associated with this, uh, with this workspace here. Now, the file itself is a loop file, but it's actually using the Microsoft Fluid Framework. And if you haven't come across that, the Fluid Framework is a collection of client libraries used that, that can distribute and synchronize shared state. These libraries allow multiple clients to simultaneously create and operate on shared data structures as if they're a local object. So simply put, it makes building real-time multiplayer apps fairly easy. And when you build a Fluid-based app on top of Syntex repository services, it works directly on your storage container. So you get all of the benefits like security, compliance, data residency, and more that Syntex repository services has to offer. So I'm going to start editing this page here. What I can do is do this forward slash to insert a component, and I'm going to put a checklist here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, just make a few items in here. Now, right now, I am working on this page by myself. But what I can do is click on 
workspace member here, and I'm going to invite another person from my organization to collaborate with me within this workspace and on on the on the pages within it. So I just sent an invite to Alan De Young, and Alan's going to receive an email uh, letting letting him know that he he's had this workspace shared with him, and you can see. Alan has clicked on here and he's got this file open and we can now collaborate together here within the loop application using the fluid framework. And again, this all works with syntax repository services right out of the box too. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We can collaborate on pages and the loop app is awesome how and how it's built on syntax repository services. What I wanna do now is switch over to a new tab here I went to office.com and you can see here that my first page has loaded, loaded up there. Um, so this new page shows up and behind the scenes what's happening is the page is getting indexed and the activity signals are getting generated and fed into the hopper of our intelligent system. Um, and it's showing recent and recommended files in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So if you are building your own Syntex repository services application, whether it's using Fluid or not, you can opt into or out of having your app's content show up in these experiences in office.com and others. And again, all of these data and signals are being fed also into our security and compliance systems. So an M365 administrator can go to the Microsoft Purview portal and take advantage of the security and compliance features they've come to expect. So your custom Syntex repository services app can provide these capabilities to your app's customers too. So that's it for the demo. There's two key things that I want you to leave here with. Number one, Syntex repository service is built for Microsoft 365 scale. We as a company are using it for our Microsoft Loop, Designer, and other first party experiences. And all of the key features that I showed you from the Loop app will be available to your custom Syntex repository services app too, like container management, using permissions to control access to files and sharing, real-time collaborative app experiences with the Fluid framework, activity and signal-based experiences like recent and recommended can show up in other M365 experiences for your app's users, and security and compliance capabilities like e-discovery, audit, and more for your app's customers. So that's it for me. Looks like I went ahead of time, so that's good. Thank you very much for your time today. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them on the chat and I'll stick around a little bit to, to help answer those. Yeah, the, the chat is lively and it's more <laughs> people saying that they love what you're doing and uh, you should keep up the good work there.